Hey, welcome to Church for Business People. It's so, so good to see you. My name is Moradi Wanjao or Pastor M. And I am so excited to welcome you. If this is your first time to Church for Business People, some of you are checking in again. You've been here many, many times and it's so good to see the community coming in. Uh, wherever you're from, you know the drill. Uh, we always start by just checking in. Tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to know. And so whatever city, whatever estate, whatever part of the world you're watching from, just, just uh, put that on the link on, on the comment section right now. We'd just love to know uh, because it helps us just to know who we're speaking with. Uh, hey, tonight we're continuing with a series. Hey, if you've been watching, you know this whole May, we're talking about rebuilding with wisdom. And so tonight we're talking about staffing your business. Uh, one of the things you do in this rebuilding season is put the right team around your business. So this is part two. We did part one last time. If you haven't seen it, you can go on, the, on our YouTube page and you'll be able to find it there. Uh, so we're on part two today. And as we start, I know this is going to be a fantastic night. Uh, please make sure you, put, you share this link with your friends. Uh, let your friends know about what's happening tonight because I pray that this will be something that will be life changing. You could change a life for somebody just by sharing this link with them. So tell them, uh, hey, you need to watch this. You need to, come on, let, welcome to church. This is church just for entrepreneurs. And you know, if you would like to connect to our business community, we have a WhatsApp business community. And one of the things about the WhatsApp business community, it's exclusive for kingdom entrepreneurs. If you are passionate about business, if you're passionate about seeing God's business done God's way, then this is your community. So click on the link. There's a link actually on the on the on the broadcast just below here. Uh, click on that link. It'll take you directly to where you can sign up. We would love to just. It's a place. By the way, it's not a it's not a group. It's not a place where you'll be receiving spam and just lots of WhatsApp messages. It's just a place where you get exclusive content that is for kingdom entrepreneurs. So click on that. We'd love to have you join us and be part of our community. So hey, one of the things we always do at Church for Business People, we always start with worship. One of the reasons we do that is because this is not a business seminar. This is church. This is bringing God's kingdom into our business. So the first thing we want to do is worship our God, our King, our Maker, and lift Him up above our lives, above our families, and above our businesses. So let me invite my friend and my partner, Kanji, to lead us in that time of worship. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you doing, man? How are you holding? How's everything going? Um, I mean, us guys here are excited about worship. We are, what do you say? We're quarantined, but we're not quitting. Mm. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> so anyway, we, we are, we're so glad to have you here, man. Um, I pray that you will worship with us. We will raise the king. And as we put him in his rightful place, everything in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives will fall into its rightful place. Amen. All right? Amen. Let's do this. Ah! 
speak your truth in every situation. We speak your provision. We speak your goodness. Father, you are enough. You are enough. You are enough. And we can declare where we were Tosha, God. Father, when there's so many things that are lacking in our lives right now, all over the world, we can be able to stand on this eternal truth, God, that you, you are enough. Let's sing this song together. Where we Tosha.
of your eye. apple of his eye. He's the apple of our eye. Mm. And I believe that this encouragement shall manifest in your life. Mm. That this is not just a singing moment, but this is a true life moment for you as you've gone through this. God bless you. Wow. Thank you so, so much, Kanji, for leading us in that encouraging time. My goodness, God is in the house tonight. I know that you can tell God is in the house tonight. If you are joining us for the first time, this is Church for Business People. This is Church for Entrepreneurs. If you are a person who is into business, if you are a person who is into providing solutions through your business, if you are a person who is passionate about God's business than God's way, then this is Church for Business People. We're so excited you're here. Uh, I want uh, I mentioned earlier, join our WhatsApp community. There's a link at the bottom of this broadcast. Uh, join our business community if you're interested in it. What it is, it's an exclusive community. Uh, and it's, it's a place where you receive, you're able to send your questions, you're able to put in your comments, you're able to even contribute to the agenda of Church for Business People. And so please uh, connect to that link. We'd love to have you as part of our community. This month, we're also going through, as a whole community, we're going through the book of Proverbs, what we're calling the Proverbs Challenge. And today's verse, my word today, I don't know about you, but my word today, today we're reading Proverbs 27. And my word today was Proverbs 27, 17. I don't know if you read that or that caught your attention. It says, as iron sharpens iron. So one person sharpens another. And here's what we're doing. That's actually exactly the essence of this community, of this business community, that we want to sharpen each other. We want to make sure that every one of us is being exactly who God called us to be in the sector or the business that God has put us in charge of. And so, hey, I want us to just begin by reading a note. I love reading, uh, interacting with some of the stuff that you send me. So please uh, send, send me any comments you have on this show or anything that you think about uh, as you watch the service. Uh, but I want to read a note from somebody in our community that uh, called Jerry, who really encouraged me. Here's what she says. Hey, Hey, Pastor M, I hope you're well. My name is Jerry and I joined the Church for Business People on April 29th. I learned about it from a dear friend. You see, this is what I talk about sh sharing with your friends. Uh, she got about, she had about this podcast from a friend. She said, I, I felt I needed to say this. Thank you for allowing God to use you through this program. When I started it, it I was extremely stressed out and depressed because of debt and everything that, that's happening now due to the pandemic. With all the anxiety I had going on, it had been very difficult to even concentrate on prayer and reading the Proverbs challenge, but I chose to start anyway. I can boldly say that God has used it to bring back restoration to my life. Amen, I love that. My mind is being renewed every day. I have been able to, to apply the principles you taught and they're working out. I couldn't even believe it. I've been able to start paying off debts one at a time and already have ideas in place for a turnaround in my business during this pandemic and beyond. It's only a matter of final planning and execution in the next few days. And all this, get this, debt free. I love that. I thank God for you and the wisdom he has placed to reach out to people like me. God bless you abundantly. Thank you so much, Jerry. By the way, that is such an encouraging message. It's always good when you're doing something like this to know that it actually counts and somebody is being impacted by it. So I really, really want to thank you for just affirming and encouraging me and also the community, all of us who are walking this journey. I know there are others who are where you are and who are also getting out of that trap and moving forward. And I, I trust that your words have also been an encouragement to many who are listening tonight. So this month of May, we began a conversation with a good friend of mine. His name is Leonard Muncharo. Uh, he runs an amazing business in the real estate uh, investment sector. And this last week, we began a conversation uh, on staffing your business. And uh, this, uh, you know, this thing about staffing your business, whether you're in construction or education or IT or beauty or fashion or media, whatever business you're in, building a great team, building a great team with a great culture is essential 
to your success. We talked about Packard's law last time. No company can grow revenues consistently faster than its ability to get the right people to implement the growth. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. I want to just, without further ado, invite my friend Leonard Mcharo. This is part two of the interview that we watched last week. Hey, uh, so thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, Leonard Mcharo. It's so good to see you again. Uh, we've been having a conversation, a four-week conversation, actually. And uh, thank you so much for just availing time for that. Leonard is actually the CEO of Savo Limited, a real estate, a fantastic real estate investment company. And last week, we actually began a series, a, a conversation on the importance of getting the right people for your business. In fact, I like how you put it. You said first, who, then what? So getting the right team is paramount uh, for a business. It's even more important than the product of your business. So I really liked, uh, that was such a good takeout last time. Somebody asked this question. I think it's a great question for us to start with. Uh, somebody mm -hmm. just asked that actually today. Uh, we're having a conversation mm -hmm. about last, last Wednesday. And the person said, mm -hmm. I've got a small business. I don't have the money to hire these incredible people like Mjaro does. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to have the right team around me, but I just don't have the resources to get them. How, do you, how would you answer mm -hmm. that person? How would you go about getting a team uh, when you've got mm -hmm. a limited budget? Have you done it or what advice would you give? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, um, Chungaji. Uh, this is a, that's a good question. I think if you check what attracts people to a place of work, pay is never at the top of the list. It usually comes number three, four, or five. Hmm. It's, it's fairly low. On, the risk, on, on that list. Yeah. But there are other things that are more important. So I think if you went to young people, especially, you know, guys who are in college, because you can get some very sharp people who are still in school who can do this thing part time. If you went to people who are young and sold them on a good vision, I think people are more interested in um, a good working environment where their, their creativity and, and their personality can, can shine, uh, yeah. a place where they are respected. So if you had that, so people are looking for that environment. They're looking for meaningful work. I think yeah. uh, these, uh, the, the new guys, are they millennials or it's beyond millennials now? Yeah. Yeah. They're looking for meaning in their work. And then, you know, career development and pay, those, I'll put that as number three. Yeah, because for us, we, we solve those three problems for guys. Wow. So if you got younger people, they can buy that vision. And for, for very little, because there's, there's not work, too much work going around. But if you get sharp guys when they're young, then you're able to get them uh, at um, you know at a good price. So, now, so, yeah. the, Go the, the other advantage of that is then young guys, you're able to mold them. That's a really big um, uh, benefit. So you're able to mold them for the long term. So yeah. you don't have to get guys who already have preconceived ideas. You're able to, to mold your culture in these young people from the very beginning. Fantastic. Yeah. So I know you don't have to be expensive. You, 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 you told me earlier that this is something you guys have done for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you've run mm -hmm. internships uh, in the different places mm -hmm. you've worked and you're actually running an internship mm -hmm. at Savo. You even mentioned this last week that you actually mm -hmm. take, it takes you a year of internship mm -hmm. before you hire somebody. And so you're yes, saying, yes. start with young people, give them opportunity mm -hmm. for training, give them opportunity for mm -hmm. meaningful work. And it doesn't mm -hmm. actually have to be that you're starting with stars or hiring expensive people. I like exactly. That. Now, exactly. let, let's dig then into what you get these people. So mm -hmm. maybe you managed to get mm -hmm. some young people, you've got some good, mm -hmm. you talked about, you, you mentioned an interesting word last time, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. had to do with the process of getting your ordinary people to become passionate about your company. Mm -hmm. You know, you get these yes. workers to really love the company and you call mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. I think you call it, what do you call it? Savonization? Savonization. Savonization. Tell us exactly. about that. I think I'm very curious. Exactly. I want people to just understand how, what is savonization yeah. and how do you do it? It's particular to your yes, company, yeah. but how do you do it? Wonderful. So I think when you get people into any organization or, or a nation, assume you're an immigrant and you're going to Uganda, you, you have to be Ugandanized first, you know. <laughs> so if you're coming into Savo, we assume you're coming from a different nation, then you come. We have to teach you to be who we are, to first understand um, what we do, why we exist, why we are about, and then make you be a believer in that philosophy. Yeah. and then make you be an evangelist of that philosophy. So I think mm. it, it has so we have to start with knowledge and then a belief system and then you to be able to participate in it. So that, 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 that is what we call savonization. Oh, wow. And we basically want to ensure that everything we do, you know, in, in all our talk, all our actions, uh, product making, sales, all that is a savonization process. So we mm. do it in three, in three basic ways. Yeah. Number one, we do savonization mainly using mentorship. 
Okay. So you come, you'll belong to a small group, and then as, as people are talking to you, because this is about your work, but it's also about your life, right? That if you have the right mindset, and this mindset will help you even in your personal life. Yeah, so so we, we know means, that people are interested in growing as human beings. So mentorship means I'm putting you with an older staff member, mm-hmm. somebody with more experience to work with you, help you understand the business. Is that what, what the idea there is? Yes, exactly. So, so, so there's the business, but also to just be with you as a human being. Yeah, so you are, you are a younger person. I mean, like, uh, like me, I'm, 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 I mentor the, the older men, for instance, mm. right, in the office. So people are starting families, they have young children, I've been in marriage a little longer, I've raised children a little longer. So we are talking about work, but we're also talking about life. Yeah, so my wife also has some, some several groups. So I have, I have a group of older men, I have a group of younger people. My wife, the same, she has a group of the older ladies and a group of younger ones. So we can take them where they are. And then each of those people also is supposed to reach out to someone else. Yeah, yeah. So once you have that, then you have that kind of mentorship that, that goes on. That's, um, that's number one. Yeah. Um, number two, you have, um, we execute our, all our roles in council. So as you're working, you're always around the table. So you hear, okay, how does that guy think? How does this one think? And then the, the people who have been there long enough know because we are very specific in the kind of language we use, in our kind of mentality. So they come and say, ah, no, we can't do that. I say, no, 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 we, we don't have, cannot do that. The issue is how do we get to do that, you know? So we'll teach you, and, 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 and some of it ha- happens, you know, in time. We sort of transmit to you our mentality through counsel, yeah? And then number three, so this is where it like, gets a little that's, that's almost like on-the-job training, your immersion. You're just throwing this them is, into this work. Is the, with e- others exactly 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 because we expect you to perform very highly we delegate a lot of big tasks even to the very young people but you're not expected to carry that load alone okay yeah you no know, the book of proverbs talks about having um having um counselors around you that if you have many counselors you can you can achieve you can, you know you can attack a city if you want yes. to do a war you need counselors so that kind of 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 counsel that's what that, that's what we are looking for. So, and council comes at different levels. We have the general council. This is where the entire company meets once a week, and we read a book, and mm. we study. So, that, as you're talking about performance, on one side, we're also studying certain value systems that 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 that, um, that we think are important. When you go to a department, you're doing that in council. Yes. Yeah. So you you have to perform, but you have to check out with your with your teammates and you know build you together, you know build each other uh, together and that kind of thing. So. Yeah. We have from the general to the departmental, even your task. When you get stuck, please just reach out to anybody and ask. So we have that. Uh, that's also very important. Okay. And then so, number three. So mentoring and then on the job training, immersion. On the, the job tra- tra- training. And, and then the last one, we call it FIRE. FIRE is Financial Independence Retire Early. Yeah. Mm. So we don't want you to be an employee forever. So we teach you how to be financially independent. And being financially independent first starts in the mind. So. At some organization, we have taught you how to work and how to produce, right? During FIRE, we now teach you how to retain. You are mm. creating wealth for others. Can you retain it also for yourself? You I know. And once we have taught you how to be financially independent, because I, I want by the time my guys are in their 40s, they really don't need to work. In fact, with Savo, if you have worked with us for three, four years, you really don't need to work for a salary. Yeah. So why save? Why is it important to save? Why is it important for us not to pay you all your money in cash? But to pay you some of it in the units mm. that way even when you're talking to an outsider because we also want to savonize our our customers we want to savonize our our tenants we want to savonize our, our investors if you are living the life it is easier for you to go and talk about that life out there I yeah love it. so we would like our purpose because our purpose is all about financial independence i love it so we want people to also understand it and live it you know, one thing that really comes to mind on this one, this is just something random as you were speaking right now. I was thinking so many people come to sell me insurance or mm-hmm. come to sell me investment products. Mm-hmm. And I look at them and I say, but you're broke. Mm-hmm. Can't you give me a product to make me money. You don't have it. And, 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 and with all due respect, you know, it's like you, you don't teach me about wealth if you have no money. But yes. you're saying you're teaching your, your employees who will actually be selling investments to others. And you're mm-hmm. showing them, mm-hmm. look, our value, because mm-hmm. for us, investment is not just a product we sell. It is our value. Yes. We're trying to bring financial freedom to others. So we ourselves yes. must be financially free. That's the DNA of your company. 
Uh, exactly. I mean, that's exactly. the kind of thing that can't be taken. It's 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 a, it's your unique selling proposition. It's a thing that is unique about some. That that is the thing that our competition will not be able to copy. They will copy our buildings. They will even copy our price points. But that 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 genuine and very intense uh, immersion of people into our mindset and lifestyle. Yes. Because you know, you come in frugality becomes something that we enshrine. Young people who are now driving fa- flashy cars, those ones are now despised. You see, now it's a complete change of mind from what they thought before. People My want goodness. to get a job so they can drive flashy cars. Then they come here suddenly and, they, and, and, and their mindset is changed. I think every bank HR person should come and learn from you, by the way. Let me, I'll, I'll just park that, that one there. In this difficult season, what is, okay, before I talk about this season and what your benefits have been, tell us, you mentioned books. Maybe a couple of books that you'd say, if somebody's watching this, what are a couple of mm-hmm. books that you'd say? Here are some really good books I've read with my team that have been fantastic, that I would recommend mm-hmm. for somebody to mm-hmm. read with the team or that could yes. really build a fantastic culture. Okay. Uh, fantastic. Jim Collins' books have been very good. Uh, they have done very well for us. Um, good to Great for me is a must read for anybody. There's a book he wrote also called uh, Great by Choice very mm. very practical so it's like takes the good to great uh, principles and puts them into practice yeah so it's really 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 good but now because my team has now matured we have been at this for long i've now taken them to read a book called built to last mm. yeah now that is what we are studying at the moment so that oh. they understand why because yeah. uh, good to great tells you some very nice things but you know, a build to last gives you some very insider information as a leader. So because I'm not training followers, I'm training leaders. Yeah. So I really want them to understand why does our culture have to be like this? Yeah. Why does our um, our, our our goals need to be so big and so ridiculous? Why yeah. does you know so those kinds of things help? So Jim Collins' books are, are perfect. You need to also get the right strategy. And there's a difficult book, but I think worth your time, called uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. Mm. That's a, it's a fantastic book yeah. that um, removes you from the quagmire of competition and teaches you how to create, mm. right? Mm. And then there are very simple books that are written by... Because, okay, those two books, those two guys, uh, the, the writers of Good to Great and the Blue Ocean Strategy, those are like uh, management gurus, right? They are, they are, they are, um, they are academics. Yeah. But you also need to read books written by hardcore entrepreneurs, guys who have been there, done that. So they are not telling you about other guys, they are telling you about what they do. Yeah. There's a simple book that was recommended to me by one of my mentors. I, I really recommend it for everyone. It's called Running Lean. Yeah. It shows you how to literally iterate from plan A to a plan that works. Mm. I told you, I, I think I've mentioned before that we had like eight different business models before we settled on this one. So it teaches it very quickly. Instead of writing, you know, a 60-page business plan that you will never use or implement, you have a little A4 that you can quickly, so they have something called the Lean Canvas. So that really, really helps, yeah. Wow. So there are books like those, yeah, yeah. And yes. other books, I think for me, if you get these Silicon Valley guys, they have found simple ways of doing amazing things and they share their um, their knowledge, I think, quite, quite freely. So there are, there are various books out there. I love it. And I mean, for, for those who are watching and maybe you're not a reader, because not everybody loves reading, but you know, there are YouTube videos. There's, there's knowledge that you can learn together. Uh, but I think one of the things exactly. I also want to challenge you is to say that leaders are readers. <laughs> leaders are readers. You need yes. to learn. You need to get, get into the habit of reading. Now, I know you're doing the Proverbs challenge with some of your guys as well. I mean, you're talking about mm-hmm. the fact that you're also reading the book of Proverbs and that that is one of the things you're doing with your team. Yes, uh, yes, indeed. To hear as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, in, in this difficult season, so this is a question I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. What benefits have you experienced by having the right team around you? Okay, um, that's fantastic. So one of the biggest things we have, because as a company grows, you end up, you, you keep hitting a ceiling. You see, the time maybe you are um, you're happy with um, 200,000 shillings a month. Yeah. Then you get to a place where you, and you move from, you know, from 20 to 50 to 100 to 200 in a, in a short period of span. Then you get to a place where it's not increasing. Then you have to break that glass ceiling. Maybe you now get to a million. Then after a while, you know, it starts going slow. Then you break that glass ceiling, then you get to two, 10 million, you see. So we, we felt we were at a place where we are sort of hitting a glass ceiling. We have been growing very fast. Our, our company has been growing in multiple times since the business model started. So this for us has been beneficial because we now don't have, um, we don't have dead stuff. 
we don't have uh, you know people who are doing nothing but we have now taken this organization because an organization is like an organism which is a simple organism we are now becoming very detailed we are now developing mm. our processes and now become you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's and everybody is busy in that process you see mm. they already understand why we exist they already understand our core values they already understand our goals they already understand the business model and the strategy now how do we take this thing and bring it to the department so everybody's involved from the company to the department how yeah. do you take it from the department to the section how do you take the section to the individual so that from here everybody is involved in the setting of the goals and the strategies and then in the execution wow yeah so, so the beauty now is that having the right team yeah exactly because can you imagine if we have um, six or seven or eight departments i don't have the capacity to to go through and create all that and for us get, getting um, i don't know a consultant to come and do for us our pr systems or it, it won't work because we have such a weird way of working we can only do it for ourselves so this is the time where everyone is so busy setting this thing up to to their various um, yeah yeah i love yeah, it yeah. you get a good team and then you're not working alone as a leader everybody yeah. is leading with you and yeah, exactly so 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 what, one of the amazing things that has happened in this season is um they said wait a minute we can't grow by 15% 20% we must think of 10xing we must 10x over a 3 year period so all the processes and everything we're doing now is how do we 10x the number of investors in the next 3 years so wow. now we have about 700 so guys are like you know what 7, say 2020 000. is gone so 2021 22 23 we must be at 7000 so what do we need to do so you see now that that already challenges people to you know amazing adding a zero to any number is a big deal <laughs> yeah yeah so right now this team is trying to literally add a zero to the number that we already have wow Wow. Yeah. I love it. Hey, you know, this is phenomenal. You've been such a such a resource and such a wealth of information and knowledge for us. Maybe just I don't know if there's any random piece of advice or just a thought you'd give to somebody. There are people right now who are watching this who are starting restarting businesses because they collapsed. Mm-hmm. There are others who are starting mm-hmm. up their first business. Mm-hmm. There are others mm-hmm. who are just in a place where they're discouraged. Maybe there are others who mm-hmm. are now figuring out how do we recover in this season? Any just yes. what 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 word would you say to somebody and that's any 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 random thing i just want to give you the open space to just speak mm. uh to the public and just tell us what what would you say to us as as yeah. kingdom entrepreneurs yeah yes fun, fantastic i think uh, maybe one of the things we make a mistake as uh, entrepreneurs is we start a business as a vehicle we even have special purpose vehicles we think a business is a vehicle to meet my needs or a vehicle for me to showcase my talents or a vehicle for me to do my thing i don't think so i think the business should generate products the business should generate leaders the business should you know so create this thing as an end to itself beyond yourself beyond your needs beyond your talents beyond your lifetime So if you're able to create a business like that that not not that uh, I can do this so I need that I need something to be able to help me do this no 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 the business should be able to solve big problems that are beyond you so create it as a self generating self um, growing greatness generating machine mm. should, your business should be a greatness generating machine so the business will create gener- great leaders in future it will generate great products it will generate great strategies great profits beyond you yeah yeah so let's 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 not let's not let's not be on top of our businesses let the businesses be able to go and really achieve whatever they they'll achieve beyond our lifetime i love that hey hey lenard we must have you on church for business people again uh this has you've been such a good resource for us and uh Thank all you. the best with savo uh by the way if you'd like to know more about uh, lenard and his company savo.ke is the yes. and they have some great investment products as well so check them out and uh let's see, we'll just keep praying for him as well and all the great work that you guys are doing thank you for pouring into us may god bless you as you've been a blessing to us as well thank you thank you mr gaji thank you very much also awesome.
Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. I mean, I've loved having you on the show. It's been great, great having Leonard. And I know he's been watching the broadcast as well. He's part of our community. So thank you so much for contributing. And you know, some of you are also entrepreneurs. Some of you have great stories, great things that you can teach the rest of us. This is going to be a collaborative community where we teach one another. So if you know stories, if you know things that you're expert at teaching, let me know. Hit me up. Uh, I'd love to feature you on our show as well. But you know what? As I said earlier, we're, we're, we're walking through the Proverbs Challenge. And Jaro and I are actually part of the same Proverbs group. I'm, I'm, I've got several uh, groups that I'm walking through the Proverbs with. Uh, one of them is a group of entrepreneurs, younger entrepreneurs. He's one of the guys I'm working with uh, in my team. And, you know, uh, we've, we've been blessed as we've learned together. We've been able to provide solutions for each other, encourage each other, grow from God's word. And, in, and input God's word into our businesses. And you know, here's the thing that's happening this June. I'm actually encouraging every one of us. I want to challenge every one of us to do, to consider doing what we're calling Proverbs Challenge Reloaded. Yeah, that's right. We actually want to read through the book of Proverbs again, a second time uh, for, for, for all of us. And you know, here's what we're, going to, we're saying, you know, uh, and before I even say that, let me just say for our group, this is going to be the fifth time. So Chara and I and a group that we're going through, uh, we're, this is going to be our fifth time. We started in February and we're reading it. We've committed to read it through for two years. Uh, so we're crazy like that. But we want to challenge you to read it a second time. And here's what we're saying. If you didn't read, maybe you, you, you're new to the broadcast, maybe you caught the news late, uh, so you didn't quite join us in the beginning. But we're saying, hey, here's your chance to actually just crack open the book of, of, of Proverbs, uh, get a good version of the Bible. There's a, there's a good Bible app called YouVersion. And you can download that and it's got multiple versions. Find a good, easy version to read. Uh, and hey, we will start reading together. And every day, starting June 1st, we're going to just be reading a chapter of the book of Proverbs. If you've already read through, hey, we want to take, this is where you reload it. How do you reload it? You get five friends and walk with them through the month of June. So, so just invite friends, call, call some friends, hit them up, tell them this is changing my life. I want us to change our lives together and form a WhatsApp group or some kind of group. And every day, everybody posts something that you're learning together. And then thirdly, if you're working with a group, because many of us are already working with groups, some of us with multiple groups, uh, here's what I want to challenge you to do. Challenge your group to each find their four or five people and then walk with them through the book of Proverbs. The most exciting thing about it is that now you become a coach and your group becomes a coaching group. It transitions into a coaching group and you're able to help each other as now you help other people to walk through the book of Proverbs. So Proverbs Challenge Reloaded, make a commitment. Let's do this. Let's bring God's wisdom. This is the whole idea about this. We want to take God's wisdom and make it viral among kingdom businesses. So every single one of us is understanding how to tap into wisdom uh, for the things that God is calling us to do. So I want to challenge you to do that. And Today I want to summarize, I just want to summarize some of the things that we've been talking about when it comes to building a great team culture. And I want to introduce you to this term, some of you already know it, it's called a leadership pipeline. Today we're going to, we're going to just talk a bit about how do you build a leadership pipeline. What's a leadership pipeline? It's an intentional, sequential process by which an organization equips and deploys in-house talent at every level of the organization. So what are we saying? You've got an intentional, sequential process it's intentional it's def it's done it's not just done haphazardly it's sequential it's done step by step and it's a process through which an organization recruits equips and deploys in-house leaders as opposed to hiring stars you equip your own people from the grassroots all the way from the bottom till up and at every level of the organization i got this term from a man called ram charan who wrote a great book by the same name leadership pipeline he he consulted for many years with a big one of the big companies ge and wrote about basically a process, a genius process that they use uh, to raise leaders that have allowed this process to have 128 years of market dominance. By the way, the funny thing about the process, you read the book of Proverbs, you realize there's nothing new under the sun. That's exactly what Solomon talks about. You read the, the Gospels, you realize, my goodness, that's exactly what Jesus did. He started with his people, he built a leadership pipeline, and today his words are still reverberating across the world because he understood this concept. So why a leadership pipeline? You know, the main limiting factor or, or, or to your growth, <laughs> it's not money. Many people think it's money. Uh, it's not money. It's not strategy. It's not connections. It's not facilities. Your main limiting factor, let me tell you what it is tonight. Your main limiting factor is the right people. Yeah, that's right. The right people. If It's, it's not even customers. <laughs> you will get customers, by the way, if you do think something's right. But without the right people, your growth is just going to be doomed. You're, it's, it, you're, you're, you will not succeed. Uh, if you want to change the world, you need the right people. 
And that's why Solomon said in Proverbs 14 verse 4, this verse hit me last week as, I, as we were reading this part, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox come abundant harvests. At first you'd ask, what does that have to do with anything? Oxen, mangers. You know what Solomon is talking about? Oxen were really the means of production, the team that the person was working with, because a farmer would have a team of oxen that would work for him. The manger is the, his salary. It's what he fed them with. And so he's saying, when you don't have people working for you, when you don't have a team working for you, your manger is empty. So that's a nice thing for a farmer. You're like, phew, I don't have to pay for a manger. But here's the problem. When you don't have oxen, the manger is empty, but the strength of an ox, with the strength of an ox come abundant harvest. What does that mean? It's only when you have a strong team around you that you can actually hope to have abundant harvest. So don't, you know, it's so easy to think about how do I work alone? How do I keep my costs low? How do I make sure I don't have people around me? But that's dooming yourself to not having abundant harvest. It's interesting, Jesus used the same language, exact same language, Luke chapter 10 verse two. He says, the harvest is plentiful. You know this verse, the workers are few. So what he's saying is, look, you could use this in business. You could say the profit is plentiful. <laughs> what you don't have is good, reliable team. That's what's going to keep you from profit. It's useful in the gospel as well. You know, as a pastor, if you're a pastor, you're a minister watching this, or even a discipler. You know what? Having people, having an abundant harvest, having people for your church, they're they are there. The key thing that will always be a limiting factor for any venture, any kingdom venture, is having the right people at the home. So you need to be in the pro you need to be careful. You need this is something that you need to put energy into. And it's interesting that as kingdom entrepreneurs, this core business, this thing of raising leaders, this work, the, the, the leader's core job is raising leaders. And this work, it's such an important work. It's so aligned. This is where the kingdom intersects with your business. Because in the Bible, this work is called disciple making, making disciples. It's a core business that Jesus leaves his church. He says, make disciples of all nations. What does that mean? It means help everybody understand my purpose for them. Help them to be everything I want them to be. In other words, my job as a CEO is to make sure that everybody who works for me becomes everything God wanted them to be. When I do that, when I take care of that business, God takes care of my business because I have the right people now and we cannot, there's nothing that we cannot do. Get the right team. As, as Charo reminded us last week, it's first who, then what? Get the right people on the bus and you'll be amazed you can go anywhere you want to in the world. So when you have a leadership pipeline, here are some benefits. Number one, consistency. Uh, when you have the right leadership pipeline, your staff team will, if, you, if, you're, if you're developing your people, if you're raising people from the grassroots and you've got a good sequential and intentional uh, process. Number one, you're going to have consistency. Your staff team will always have the same values, the same DNA, the same language. And that will reduce conflict. It will reduce that confusion. That It will give you common vision, which will lead to effectiveness. So that it's so critical because then you have consistency. Number two, you have motivation. By the way, when, when your team understands where they fit in, when they're equipped to do their work, there's nothing worse than being in a team where you don't know what your job is, you don't know if you're succeeding, you don't know what the next step is. It gives just motivation, understanding, this is where I am in the pipeline. This is what I have to do to get the next level. So it just brings clarity and brings motivation, a huge factor for motivation. And then number three, it brings focus. You know, a lot of people, what they do is when you need to hire somebody, when you find that your business starts growing, you go and look for somebody, you poach them from a competitor, you, you bring somebody in, a staff from elsewhere, there's a danger of hiring stars. And here's what it is. You bring people in, they don't have your values. They don't have your DNA. They'll always be telling you back there, this is how we used to do it. Because they, they think that they're still where they were. They only know what they know. It's so much work to untrain somebody and teach them your culture. Maybe they came from a place where it was toxic. People just cut each other down. It's, you win at all costs, even if it means the team loses. And if that's what they've learned, by the time you bring that, you remove that from them so that you can effectively use their skills in your company. My goodness, you'll be having wars all the time. And so this allows you to focus. It allows you to just be cl clear because you've got a team now where people understand the DNA and they're moving as one. So this whole idea of uh, leadership pipeline, it's a critical idea for you as you're rebuilding your business. Now, let me just use my uh, an example. Uh, for, this is something that has worked successfully for me and for us at Mavuno Church. Uh, it worked at Nairobi Chapel when I worked, where I worked for 13 years. Uh, this, it's worked in every business that Caro and I have run. Uh, at Mavuno, by the way, which is where I spend the majority of my time, practically every one of our key leaders, the core leaders around me, are people who've walked through our leadership pipeline. So they joined our, 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 our organization as interns and have grown through the ranks. Uh, in the last 15 years, we've probably trained 250 to 300 interns. Uh, taken th those people through what we call our discovery program, our internship program. And this is a leadership development process. Uh, many of these have graduated, ended up becoming some of our best staff, or 
in a, they've left and gone to the corporate world or worked in other places, but ended up being great leaders there as well because it's about leadership equipping. So wherever they go, they end up actually thriving and succeeding. So this, the foundation for this is something that works in ministry, if you're in ministry, it's something that works in NGOs. It's something that works in the profit, uh, in the for-profit sector as well. If you're in profit as well, it works in government, wherever, whatever sector you're in. Uh, and let me just say that um, it's it's very interesting because for us, the way we do it at Mavuno is we focus on three core competencies when we take you through the internship. We talk about uh, character, competence, chemistry. I talked about that last time, didn't I? These are the three things we we, we take you through, and we take about fifteen to thirty people through it every year. And what we do is that by the end, what we're doing is we're developing them as leaders, uh, people who can lead themselves, but we're also giving them our DNA. We have a mixture of classroom instruction, uh, stretch assignments, on-the-job learning, uh, personal mentoring. We have a whole mixture of things that we've developed to form our leadership pipeline. And uh, we give them a stipend, uh, just something that will help meet their costs. They're not on staff. It's a training program. But out of it, we have a, a, a stream. We're injecting a stream of great talent into the organization every year. And here's the thing. Uh, it's not just useful in church. I, like I said, we've done it in business as well. Uh, Car one of the best examples for us is we run a, a video business with Carol. And we designed a six-month internship. So what did we do? We went to a couple of leading uh, film schools. We found the best classes, best teachers there. We connected with them, made friends, asked them to just indicate to us and connect us with their top students, graduating students. And so we uh, recruited these and we floated our, our prospectus to them. Uh, we got two that signed up. We started with two. Uh, those two, actually, we gave them a six month internship. When they graduate at the end of that internship, one of them ended up becoming our first staff member. And then we got two others. And what happened is that just became consistent. Every six months, we'd take two others and take two others and some would leave and some would stay. Now, here's the thing. What about that thing about people leaving? Sometimes, sometimes people don't want to invest in people because what happens if I pour into somebody and then they just go? They go to a competitor or they go and become the competition. You know, you're teaching them all your secrets when you're training them. Here's the best thing that happened to us. This was a revelation for me, by the way. When every, whenever those guys would go to another company, they'd go and work with a media house like uh, one of these big media houses in the country or they would actually go and work with one of our competitors. But you know what happened? Because we looked after them well. We had a great relationship. So what did that mean? It meant I had a contact in a competitor's place. It meant I had a contact in somebody. And you know, they're not all, competition is not always a bad thing. Sometimes competition can be very helpful for you because sometimes competition has solutions you need. And so sometimes I'd have a breakdown in one of my machines and one of our interns, former interns who was working for a big media station had the expertise now and the knowledge or the connections to actually give us the connection there. Or they had bigger, more work than they could handle and they would say, I know a company that can do this job. Or, you know, it, it goes on and on and on. We just had contacts across the city who are helpful for our business. And so, you know what, you never lose. Some of the big companies, some of the big, what they call the big five audit firms, many of them do that, you, you, you know of them. They take people, they take a whole mass of students and they train them. There's some of them that are even better than others. And every year they're releasing them to the corporate world. But what happens when they need consulting gigs, they have their people in all the companies. So this is something that even for small businesses uh, that you can apply. And you know what we did is when we had those people, we, we created a team culture. We, had, we talked about what we wanted our culture to be. We had a culture where we trusted each other. We had a culture where everybody competed and worked hard. Uh, everybody gave the class. We had company values. Everybody imbibed those values. Here's the thing that happened to those young people. Every single one of them became passionate about their craft. They became really good at it. And we had a fantastic corporate culture. People loved each other. Uh, in fact, some of my good, some of them are... are are in business together even today, many, many years after we sold the company, are still running the business uh, and doing extremely well. Uh, some of them met spouses uh, in the course of working together. I mean, it, it's, it's such a joy. And for us, we saw them almost, they were like our children. They were an extension of our family. And we loved working with them. That's a culture that we created and we really enjoyed working with it. So here's the thing. You can actually create your own culture through training your leaders, creating a leadership pipeline. Uh, and I want to say that Internship is just step one. After that, you can actually say, okay, after, after the first year and once they're on now, what, do you, what, what are the training process? At Mavuno, we have several levels. Uh, we have what we call pastor in training. After you've come through the internship, a two-year uh, stint. And then we have a ministry assistant. And then we have somebody who heads a department. And so on and so forth, all the way until somebody who's able to lead a congregation or multiple congregations. You can actually define the steps in your leadership pipeline and then figure out what does it take to move somebody from here to here. What are the experiences they need? What are the challenges they need designing that? Now, 
As I talk about this, let me just say, what does it take to design a leadership pipeline? I think it's important for you. This, this can sound very theoretical, but it's not. This is deadly. This is, this is critical, and it's very, very uh, essential for you to understand. What does it take to start one? Uh, here's the problem. Too many of us are too busy working in our business as opposed to on our business. Can I say that again? Too many of us are too busy working in our business as opposed to on our business. Uh, we're too caught up in the day to day so that we don't have time to read, to process, to research, to understand what the issues are. And I really want to challenge you on this. If you get nothing else on what I'm saying today, as a business leader, you must take the time to invest. You must invest in your knowledge in your understanding, in your growing your company. And part of, for you to start a, pipe, a pipe, pipeline like this, you can't be so busy with day-to-day -day management that you have no time to actually invest in the next generation of leaders. Uh, Proverbs 25 verse 3 says, It is to the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is, to the, glory, is the glory of kings. By the way, that verse is so amazing. Uh, I just find it so, so interesting. To search out a matter. God's glory is to conceal matters. The king's glory is to discover matters. You know, in God's kingdom, God's kingdom is the only kingdom in the world where the subjects are not servants, they're kings. Because we're called a royal priesthood. And so as, a, as an entrepreneur, you, under, you need to understand that whenever you're conducting God's business through your business, you're extending God's influence, you're extending God's kingdom. And so what God is saying is, he wants you as a king, leading one of his extensions, to be involved in searching out matters. He wants you to invest in knowledge, in wisdom, in understanding. So you must set aside time for that. I set aside at least one day a week, every Thursday. That's my study day. My staff can tell you. I'm not in the office. I work from home and I don't use that time to sleep in. My goodness, I even wake up early on that day than other days. And I spend the whole day on my seat studying, researching, reading. And I've done that, by the way, for years. And I challenge my top leaders to all do the same. So we must invest on, we must work on our business, not just in our business for us to be able to start that leadership uh, pipeline. So I want to challenge you to do this because I feel like as Africans, we must become inventors. We must be people who bring solutions to the world, not just copying the solutions of the world. And the only way we'll be able to do this is by researching and investing in our, in our time on our people. So here's the thing, take some time. I want to challenge you, take some time. Think through your company this week. Think through if you were to design an internship, what are the things you'd have to you'd do to be able to help somebody who's coming out of college, uh, who may not have the the, the 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 experience you're looking for? Remember, we talked about experience is expensive. Huh? You may not be able to afford it. So, if you got somebody fresh out of college, what would you do, or fresh out of school, what would you do with them to help them get the expertise and the DNA of your company? First of all, have you defined the DNA of your company? You need to be able to figure out what do you want your company to be, and then how would you train somebody? To have that DNA. So be able to figure out what, what, what does a program, a training program look like uh, for us. And then be able to say, okay, what's the next step then? And the next step uh, for our company. So that you're able to say, by the time I'm done with this, I should have been able to replicate myself uh, several ways. Like I said last week, I have six pastors, executive pastors, who each are leading Mavuno campuses right now. Together, they're running the Mavuno movement. Man they're, man they're managing the Mavuno movement, which is allowing me then to step up. And now my mind is actually thinking, we need to be expanding across the continents. I've got my eyes on the US. I've got my eyes on Asia. I've got my eyes on other parts of the world. How can I do that? Simply because I have a great leadership pipeline that is training good leaders. Now, I'm not saying we're perfect. I know we have issues uh, and we do need to go back and to solve some of our issues in our pipeline. But that's what a leader does. You're always working on the business not just in the business. Hey, I want to stop because I know we could talk about this for a long time. I'm hoping I'm picking your curiosity. Uh, you can actually look for that book, Leadership Pipeline. Uh, there's a great, um, I'll see if I can find it. There's a, there, there are good summaries of it because it's a bit of a complex book. Uh, there's another good book I'm going to recommend and I'll probably recommend it many times in this uh, during Church for Business People. It's called E-Myth by Michael Gaba. And uh, hopefully there's a graphic of it we're putting on the screen as you watch this. Please get this book. If you are in business, you owe it to yourself. To read this book it's not a kingdom business book it's not by a, it's not by a believer as far as i know it's not written from a, a biblical perspective but the things that michael gaba teaches are the things that proverbs that king solomon would teach you uh his sister how to build a system in your business how to work on your business and one of the systems you want to be learning how to build is a leadership uh, pipeline so i want to pray for us uh before i do remember proverbs challenge reloaded uh get some friends together let's get ready to read the book of proverbs in the book of june receive knowledge receive wisdom uh, I'm looking forward to just continuing this conversation about rebuilding
rebuilding, this season of rebuilding. How do we reset our business? How do we rebuild them with wisdom? And I want to just pray for us as we come to the end of our broadcast. So I want to pray for us according to Proverbs 27 verse 17, the scripture that I read earlier. Father, I thank you for, for your community. Lord, as we're talking about kingdom business, this, this, is, this is a business of the kingdom. It's not, it's not something small we're talking about. Our businesses are not just little hustles. They are institutions that you've put in us. They are purpose that you've put in us that we may bring solutions to the world, a needy world that needs them. And Lord, I pray for every entrepreneur watching this, every kingdom business person watching this, every person who has a seed of a business idea in them that comes from you. And I pray that, Lord, you would encourage them through this broadcast. I pray that, Lord, this church would become a mainstay for them. I pray that they would find wisdom as they read through the book of Proverbs. I pray that, Lord Jesus, as we've talked about iron sharpening iron, this place would become a place of iron, iron sharpening iron, that they would be sharpened to become the men and women that God wants them to be. I speak blessing over you this week. I pray that your business will be blessed. I pray that the work of your hands will be blessed. I pray that God would go before you in everything that you set out to do this week. Ah, my goodness, may God just surprise you, surprise you with his goodness to you. I speak blessing over you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.